Indian state to use blockchain technology to issue caste certificates. This is very interesting. Uh, God Chiroli, a, uh, a little village in the state of Maharashtra, one of India's most industrialized states, plans to use the Polygon blockchain to issue caste certificates to 1.1 million uh, e Tapali and Bang, uh, Bang Ragad village, village residents. Indian Times called it the, quote, next big thing in the crypto world. A decentralized blockchain digital provi platform provider, Legit Doc, will be used to implement this project. Uh, Neil Martis, the co founder of Legit Doc, said 70% of people in the Gachi, shoot, these names are hard, Gachi Roli district are tribal, which means most of them require a caste certificate adding that the blockchain-based CAS certificates will allow the government to distribute assistance efficiently. CAS certificates are often required to receive access to different government-funded programs intended to benefit and support various disadvantaged communities. Shubham Gupta, the assistant collector of Gachiroli, stated these digital certificates would ease the government's administrative burden. Martiz explained that uh, the Polygon blockchain has the infrastructure required for connecting, quote, a document issuer, a document holder, and document verifiers. These three elements are necessary for the verification of digital CASP certificates. Okay, I'm not sure if this is a good thing or a horrible thing. First of so, all, I like that. I kind of like, oh, go on, you go ahead. I, I had the initial reaction because um people are like obviously very sensitive about caste and um you know documentation of it and having to prove it and all this stuff um i think so i had a knee-jerk reaction where i was against it but then i when i realized the intention of it it's so it's well established that you know there's um various different quote-unquote reservation systems in india and these are a lot of different government programs and subsidies that people can get if they are um, members of a uh, lower caste, certain lower castes, if you're from a tribal community. And it's basically um, supposed to be an effort to redress like really deeply entrenched social um, inequalities. Uh, so to help avail them of more means to provide for themselves and to lift themselves from those conditions. Um, but to be able to get those, uh, be eligible for those programs, you actually have to be able to prove that you're from these communities. Um, so this is the whole spirit of it. And the, the idea is that right now being able to verify these things is incredibly administratively intensive because things are usually done hard copy and it just requires so much work and it's not very efficient and people aren't actually able to um because of this administrative burden maybe have as much access to these programs as they should um so this aims to alleviate some of that burden and make the whole process better for the people who are supposed to benefit from it yeah, so I think for non-Indians, this title, just reading the title and not reading the news makes makes the news sound horrible, right? Uh, because you think like the caste system is being endorsed by the by the Polygon blockchain, right? That was my like, initial reaction to. <laughs> like, yeah, but the problem is that every just the title by itself really makes it sound like that, right? You're like, what the hell? I mean, especially I love the Polygon blockchain, okay? Uh, among all blockchains, that's, I think, my number one favorite blockchain. And the fact that the Polygon blockchain is based in India, based on Indian entrepreneurship, makes exactly. me love it even more. I you know, that's why we had the Kali NFTs. We minted those on the Polygon blockchain for that same reason, right? And I was, like, just reading a title, like, why Polygon? Why are you doing this? Why are you endorsing the cast system? But then when you read the news, you realize, oh, never mind. Basically, this is a... You need this. Okay, so we don't endorse the caste system, but the caste system has been used to discriminate against lower caste and outcasts, right? And this is a system that is trying to undo a harm by identifying the people who, are, who have been harmed, right? And this makes the process a lot easier by using the blockchain technology to, to give them certificates, right? So 
it's it's good because because it's on the blockchain is immutable is transparent nobody could screw with it it makes like you know it makes it mm, nobody can you know nobody can take that identity away from you once it's on the once it's on the blockchain so that's fantastic right this is like we're seeing use cases for the blockchain but again I wish they worked. There was an easier way because most people read the title and then they don't read the news. And I, I can tell you, like the way this was discussed in even the crypto world, um, that usually tries to show everything is a positive, um, every, you know, spin everything as more of a positive as a negative. They spin this as a negative. They were like, "Oh my god, really?" Because you pay, yeah, you pay really close attention to that kind of media realm. Tell us more about how that was reflected there. No, like even even YouTube channels uh, that cover blockchain news with a positive spin, even sometimes negative stuff, they kind of twist it to make it seem like it's more positive. They just looked at this and just they they were like, "Oh my god, this is like problematic. This is like not good." Right? Because why is like why are why are they getting involved in endorsing? the cast system right so yeah i guess they just read the title and they didn't read the rest of it right but anyways it, like, it, it definitely it, requires yeah. some knowledge of the um systems of you know like economic and social so socioeconomic redress that india has established to kind of understand what is the purpose of this because yeah it does it just i'm like oh my god i thought casteism is you know banned or you know suppose it's, the caste system is supposed to be abolished like what is this are you bringing it back it's and this is what's kind of a more complicated discussion of the whole reservation system at large. Like Katie is saying, there are upper caste Hindus who blame the existence of the caste system on Hinduism or on reservations, excuse me. So mm -hmm. it's kind of this contention of, oh, does, does upholding this reservation system, does having this reservation system to help, um, help uplift lower caste and tribal people actually maintain their, their difference? But, you know, that does it actually uphold this system? Is it upholding these differences in designations and stratification? Um, but that, that you know, that's a much larger conversation about the entire system at large. We have a similar discussion in your country, Susanna, regarding people who are race abolitionists, but they also claim racism. Want reparations. Right? Want reparations and talk about racism. And people... Um, outside of that discussion, they were like, wait a minute, how come you all say race is just a social construct, but yet people accuse people of racism, and you also want to use race as a way to uh, right some wrongs, right? Well, it's, they, not even they that, it's not even that they just talk what? about racism. It's that oftentimes people who have this lens, not even have this lens, like have that uh, position or desire or passion, um, the, the stereotype is that they see everything through the lens of race. Okay, I'm well. Yeah, that's like the crazy radicals, but uh, but the more sensible ones would say, right? Well, like not not people that take things to extreme, but some of the more sensible ones will say, like, okay, yes, this is a social construct, but because the social construct and we want it to be removed, but because it exists, we need to use it as a way to identify who has been wronged. You know what I mean? So that's what they would say. Right. So, for example, if you look at Israel, for example, um, the way that Israel wanted to define who's a Jew and who's not a Jew to give them Israeli citizenship was based on how the then I don't know how to say the, the Yahtzees. I'm not going to say their actual name because YouTube is sensitive about that. OK, they based it on how the Yahtzees defined who's a Jew. Right. So basically, the argument was, well, if you're. If you're Jew enough to be for them to be discriminated against, you're Jew enough for you to deserve the protection of an Israeli citizenship of, of being in a country. Right. So, yeah, you don't like the definitions that they came up with. You don't. But you use their definition because that's how you find out who has been wronged. That's so that's the philosophy behind it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, Katie is saying, uh, while I agree the reservation system has its cons and needs some change, lower caste people have been f refused jobs and promotions just because of their caste in both India and abroad. So there, yeah, there are a lot of criticisms of the system, but many people still acknowledge that there are issues that need to be addressed in some way. Um, 
And Forever Stormy is saying that area is so poor they can barely afford a modern smartphone. To force a blockchain issued certificate on them is crazy. Plus, a lot of these companies are usually close to the politicians. So it's really about shoveling uh, tax cash to their cronies. Now, I don't know how much is true about that second part. The, the articles that I've read about this did clarify that there will still be hard copy versions of these certificates for these people. Like they're not going to stop using paper altogether. It's just for the, the, for the verification part to, that is such an administrative burden. This system will basically it inherently provides this, this three pronged infrastructure that they need. Right. And so it's just about making it more efficient and bringing it to scale. So I don't think the uh, Stormy. I don't think the people themselves need to have the the phone. Um, the whole idea is that this is stored somewhere, and because it's stored and because this data is not very, um, you know, these are not big files. They're not like big pictures, right? So it's easy to store data like this on a blockchain with a very low cost, right? And the idea is like is the, the management of the information is being done on a blockchain, not that. If you don't have a phone now, you don't have access to it, right? I mean, the the idea is that because it's on a blockchain, it's nobody could like screw with it, and it's transparent and it's a a available to everybody to access if they need to. So, and because of the transparency of it, it removes corruption, and because of the immutability of it, it makes it hard to, um, you know, it makes it makes it makes it more secure for the people to know that once this once they have this certificate, nobody can take it away from them. Like if any and if anybody wants to mess with it, it's transparently available for everybody to see what's happening. Right? Anybody anywhere could basically be able to see exactly. It removes corruption. It makes like behind the scene messing with things very very difficult. Right? Um, and because it's a and also because the blockchain is trustless the level of bureaucracy will come down, like the level of management will be reduced, and it might actually save taxpayer rather than incre increasing tax, um, in rather than in increasing expenses, it might actually reduce it. Yeah. Oh, Stormy is saying thanks for the clarification. Yeah, and the, the articles that I've seen provided examples of what this would look like in practice. And basically the people, when they're given a hard copy of paper of their certificate, includes a QR code. And the QR code then gives you all the blockchain information. I thought this was very interesting. Yeah, I don't know if it, and also it might actually not uh, spend, uh, cost the government anything because a lot of these blockchains are very eager to show the use cases of the blockchain. So they might like provide a lot of support to the government just because of the advertising of their blockchain, just so that people could see like, oh my God, this is so amazing. I don't know actually if that's true or not, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, there's a lot of support, you know, support behind it. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.